Bella. Hold on, Bella. We made it. We made it. I'm good. Welcome to Maine. With its vast, tranquil, nautical setting, with endless things to do, you can clearly see why this state is called Vacation Land. <laughs> Means long Atlantic rocky coast, known for its frigid waters, lighthouses, and great tasting lobster. While its coastline is 300 miles of driving, if you account for all the peninsulas, harbors, and coves, Maine's shoreline is over 3,400 miles long. So come with us as we show Rumford, Bar Harbor, Belfast, Camden, Rockport, Damariscotta, Booth Bay Harbor, Wiscasset, Bath, Portland, Cape Elizabeth, Saco, and ending in Kenny Bunkport. As we explore one of America's favorite vacation destinations, coastal Maine. this is a video of the coast of Maine, we are going to start with a city about 100 miles from the coast, Rumford, located on the banks of the Androscoggin River. It draws visitors mostly for its Black Mountain of Maine ski resort. Rumford is one of the most beautiful towns I have seen, filled with trees, vintage bridges, streams, mountains, and spectacular waterfalls. With a 175-foot drop, this is the largest waterfall east of Niagara Falls. They also have a nice fireworks show every 4th of July. We take River Road, U.S. Route 2, out of town along the Androscoggin River as we head towards Bar Harbor. 160 miles later, it is morning in Bar Harbor as the sun rises over Bar Island and the Mount Desert Narrows. During low tide, you can walk to this island on the Bar Harbor Land Bridge. You can't see it now because it is high tide and covered by water. In the distance, Acadia National Park, one of the more scenic national parks. It is cold this morning. We find a good hot chocolate latte at Chocolate. You can expect when it's cold to have a good 20 to 30 minute wait at good coffee shops. We'll check out more of downtown Bar Harbor in a little bit. But first, we have a scenic train ride to catch 30 minutes northwest of Bar Harbor in Ellsworth, Maine. The Down East Scenic Railroad takes you back in time with a ride on vintage passenger rail cars. A 10 mile, hour and 45 minute round trip train ride through some natural wildlife areas of Maine. It is $17 for adults and $9 for children 3 to 12. It is pet friendly. This is a great way to see the fall colors as you go through the foliage on railroad tracks through the town of Ellsworth and across bridges. Back to Bar Harbor on Mount Desert Island. The Frenchman Bay leads out to the Atlantic. We are going to start on Main Street heading north to the waterfront. Village Green Park on the left, a grassy central town square with benches, gazebo, and summer concerts. Next to the park, the Beer Works, a pub bar, seafood restaurant with a second floor outdoor seating with a great view. A walk through the villages of downtown Bar Harbor is a shopper's paradise. You can pick up unique items that you just can't find anywhere else. Or just enjoy a gelato, sorbet, ice cream, or yogurt at CJ's Big Dipper. There's a great article on TripAdvisor, Bar Harbor, a village walk. We'll put it in the link below. Great tips for when visiting downtown Bar Harbor. The architecture, the trees, the lamps, the benches, just gives it a nice, quaint, maritime atmosphere. Igamont Park is located on a little hill overlooking the harbor. This is a nice place to enjoy your ice cream with your loved ones and watching the boats in the harbor. 
There is a big parking lot here, a good place to park so that you can walk both the villages and the waterfront areas. Of course, any visit to Bar Harbor has to include a cruise so that you can see all the little islands around here, as well as the coast of Maine. Frenchman Bay, named for the French explorer Samuel de Champlain, who visited the area in 1604. We'll show you some of those cruises in a bit, but let's look at some of the waterfront eateries. Sunrise Cafe, a good spot for coffee. It's a cafe with lobster rolls and blueberry pie. Blueberries is something else you have to experience during your trip to Maine. More blueberries grown here than any other state. Stubman's Lobster Pound, another great spot to enjoy lobster, clam chowder, imported beers and wines. Near the Fish House Grill, you can take a narrated trolley tour of Acadia National Park and Cadillac Mountain. It's time to get out on the water. From May through October, there are a variety of cruises you can take. For as little as $36, you can actually watch the lobster catchers in action on Lulu's Lobster Boat during a two-hour cruise on a traditional lobster boat. Being a smaller boat, it can get closer to the rock ledges, where you might see seals resting at lower tides. Head out into the Gulf of Maine on a catamaran and search for whales, porpoise, seabirds, and lighthouses on Bar Harbor's Whale Watch Company Friendship 5. A three to five hour cruise. Cost is $59 for adults or a kid six to 14, $33. For a shorter cruise, try a two hour narrated Bar Harbor nature cruise on the Acadia Explorer and sail along the shores of Acadia National Park and search for eagles, seals, porpoise, and other marine mammals. As it sails past granite cliffs, rock beaches, and landscape etched by glaciers and battered by the sea and the wind. Acadian Boat Tours also provide a two-hour narrated cruise along the islands of Frenchman Bay and coastal Maine. As well as marine life, you'll see mansions, egg rock, lighthouse, and migrating birds. This cruise is pet friendly. Take a sunset windjammer sailing excursion aboard the 151-foot schooner Margaret Todd. $48 for adults, $38 children 6 to 11. The schooners are pet friendly and generally sail May to October. Watch the shipmates as they lift up the sails. The sunset cruises often have live music. We stayed at a couple of hotels in the Bar Harbor region. First was the White Burgess Motel near the Down East Scenic Railway. It is 30 minutes northwest of Bar Harbor. This was a great motel, pet friendly, nice size room with kitchenette. Great for an extended stay. We also stayed at the Days Inn in Bar Harbor. It was a decent room as well. As we get ready to head south on Route 1, we pass through the town of Ellsworth, the gateway to the Down East region of Maine. We cross over the Union River. At times, Route 1 runs along the coast, but at other times, it is quite a distance from the shoreline. Unlike other states that have a fairly even coastal rim, Maine's coast is formed with a jagged land masses, islands, and peninsulas as we cross over the Penobscot Narrows Bridge. If you really want to see the coastal areas of Maine, you have to take smaller highways, sometimes for quite a distance along some of the islands and peninsulas of Maine, which can take some time to get to. Because we have some time constraints, there are some coastal towns like Castine, Maine, that we are just going to have to skip, but show the coastal towns that are either on Route 1 or not too far away from it. Just know that there is so much more to Maine's coast than even what you are seeing on this video. One of those beautiful Maine towns on Route 1 is Belfast. Located 80 miles north of Portland at the mouth of the Pasagasawake River on the shores of Belfast Bay and Penobscot Bay. Belfast, a national Main Street designated downtown, is called the broiler capital of the rural. And each July, thousands come here to eat barbecued chicken on broiler day. Just one of several festivals held here. Comfy waterfront dining bar eatery with seafood and steak at the Nautilus Seafood and Grill. Heritage Park sits right on the water and has picnic tables and hosts seasonal events and concerts. How about eating some lobster while sitting on the beach? You can do that at the Lobster Pound at Lincolnville Beach. This beach stretches for a half a mile right off of Route 1, seven miles north of Camden. 
Artists from around the country are drawn to Camden for the scenic views of Penobscot Bay from the Camden Hills State Park hillsides. As a result, photographers, painters, sculptors create an assortment of handcrafted items which can be found in the Main Street specialty and gift shops in downtown. The Camden Waterfront, a confluence of salty sea, bobbling boats, greenery, and waterfalls. The Mugutukuk River Falls. The Camden Harbor Park attracts visitors with an amazing landscape design, amphitheater with panoramic view of the harbor. A great place to enjoy the quintessential New England village, sailboats, and white steeples amidst the fall foliage. Take a two-hour cruise on the Schooner Surprise, which sails seven days a week from May to mid-October. You can help raise the sails or steer the boat. Because it has a limited amount of passengers, it has more cushion comfortable seating. It is $47 for adults, kids $37. You'll sail past lighthouses, seaside mansions amidst seals, porpoises, osprey, and bald eagles. Also check out Camden Harbor Cruises, the lively lady. Peter Ott's on the water, as well as a great view known for its steaks, pastas, and local seafood. We head out of town on Elm Street. About 20 minutes west of Camden are a couple of good wineries. The Savage Oaks Vineyard and Winery and the Sweet Grass Winery and Distillery in Union, Maine. Rockport is named for its rocky terrain. It provided most of the stone used in the U.S. Capitol building. Although smaller than Camden, Rockport has become one of the hidden gems of the mid-coastal Maine region. Named one of America's prettiest towns by Forbes magazine, it has a more laid-back atmosphere and is halfway between the more crowded towns of Bar Harbor and Kennebunkport. It is a very picturesque seaside town with plenty of schooners and fishing boats in the harbor. Rockport Marine Park, the location of the Andre the Seal statue, honoring a seal who used to entertain people in the Rockport Harbor. Damariscotta and its twin village of Newcastle are separated by a bridge in the Damariscotta River. This is where you can get great shellfish oysters. In fact, they have two oyster festivals every year. There is the oyster celebration here in early summer, and in autumn there is the annual Pemaquid Oyster Festival. Take a two-hour cruise while tasting the freshest oysters with wine on the 49-passenger River Tripper for $70. Other cruises without the oysters are $31. Or enjoy live music and seafood at the Damariscotta River Grill. We now take Highway 27 to Booth Harbor for some of the most scenic drives on our journey. If you account for all the inlets and bays in Maine, its coastline is 3,478 miles. Wow, that is more than the distance from Miami to Seattle. We cross the Townsend Gut on the Southport Swing Bridge. This Booth Bay region has multiple coves and harbors. At Decker's Cove, how about a sunset dinner at Robinson's Wharf? A waterside seafood restaurant with an oyster bar and nice views of the tugs and lobster boats in the cove. This has to be some of the most scenic drives in the country. Kind of reminds me a little of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, only more color, more variety of scenery here as we drive around Mill Cove to Booth Bay Harbor. Booth Bay Harbor is a popular yachting and tourist destination. There are many hiking trails with scenic views of rocky shores, coastal islands, and river corridors. It is about three hours north of Boston. It is a beautiful, protected harbor bustling with boat activity. Several festivals here, including Windjammer Days in the summer, when majestic schooners with their broad sails decorate the waterfront. Balmy Day Cruises has several boat tours to choose from, with trips to Squirrel Island or Monhegan Island, lighthouse tours, sailing trips, and fishing cruises. The Booth Bay Footbridge is a thousand-foot wooden pedestrian bridge that connects one side of the harbor to the other with beautiful views of the water and the boats. Music 
We now head to what is probably the most prototypical name for a New England town, Wiscasset. Now back on US-1, we cross the Sheepscot River. Wiscasset was at one time the busiest seaport north of Boston. The Sheepscot River is popular for lobster catching. So a good place to get a fresh lobster roll is at Sprague's Lobster right on the river with waterfront tables. I find these lobster shacks versus a formal restaurant are the best places to get fresh lobster. Less of a weight, they are usually slightly cheaper and more fresh. Just delicious. Wiscasa is known as the prettiest village in Maine. It has plenty of old world architecture with colorful foliage. Moving further southwest on US-1, 35 miles north of Portland is a Taste of Maine restaurant, where you can not only get to taste Maine seafood, but also inside it is filled with beautiful antique collectibles from all over Maine. Or you can dine outdoors on a sun deck with beautiful views of the river. A nice gazebo here too if you just want to take your food and eat by the river. So you wonder, what's with the Christmas music? Well, that is because we are headed to Bath. Nestled on the banks of the Kennebec River is the town of Bath. As we cross the Sagadahook Bridge, this is one of the most charming towns you will find. It is one of those towns that you would see in a Lifetime Network feel-good Christmas movie. The town celebrates an old-fashioned Christmas every year. Linwood E. Temple Park has got to be one of the coolest parks I have seen. Unbelievable color. This is where the guy in the movie realizes he made a mistake and he runs back into the arms of the girl he really loves. And then they get on a boat and ride down the Kennebec River and live happily ever after. As we get closer to Portland, US-1 becomes more like an interstate. To the right, the Androscoggin River bike path in Brunswick, Maine. The trail runs for 2.6 miles along the Androscoggin River. US-1 merges with I-295 over the Tukey's Bridge as we enter Portland. The Portland waterfront boasts a true working harbor in Maine's largest city, with tourism, dockside restaurant, historic architecture, You can ride aboard the main narrow gauge railway for $12 for adults, children 3 to 12, $6. Regular rides on weekends and also special themed holiday rides. The Four Points Marina. The Sail Main Community Sailing is located here, with programs for all ages and all skill levels for group sailing. Casco Bay Lines has ferries for both residents and tourists to the islands around Portland. Rates are very reasonable, round trip around $10 or under for most islands. You can also bring a bicycle or pet on board for a nominal charge. The Old Port Waterfront features fishing wharves and converted warehouses with restaurants and shops. The downtown is full of Victorian era buildings including the Victoria Mansion Museum. Commercial Street which runs along the waterfront was named one of the 10 best streets in the U.S. by American Planning Association. It was built upon the old piers in the 1850s. Now head into Cape Elizabeth we cross the Casco Bay Bridge on Route 77. The Portland headlight sits on the entrance into Casco Bay as we enter Fort Williams Park. This is one of the best lighthouses to visit. Not only because of the lighthouse itself, but also the scenic areas around it. The jagged rocky cliffs, with the pounding Atlantic surf, so picturesque. You can actually walk out on the rocks, as you saw me doing at the beginning of this video. There is a museum located in the former keeper's house. To learn more about the history of this lighthouse and the area, this lighthouse, which George Washington directed to be built, opened in 1791. Whale oil lamps were originally used for illumination. Today, the light is a 400 watt lamp that is visible for 28 miles. It stands 101 feet above the water. It is the oldest lighthouse of Maine. Also on Cape Elizabeth are the two rubble stone towers of Cape Elizabeth lights, 
also known as Two Lights, built in 1828. The Western Tower was deactivated in 1924. However, the Eastern Tower is still active and simply known as Cape Elizabeth Light. President John Quincy Adams appointed the first keeper of this lighthouse. The Two Lights State Park gives a great view of the lighthouses as well as exploring the shoreline, but no access to the actual grounds of the lighthouse. We saw the Sockle River in our New Hampshire video. Well, the city of Sockle, Maine is near the mouth of the river. Another attractive vintage mill town with breweries, wineries, shops, great coffee, and the scenic Sockle Falls. Saco is another restored, vibrant, and lively Main Street. The state of Maine has just done a great job with their Main Street restoration projects. It is a model that I think many other states should follow. With so many gorgeous rivers in this state, Maine has really got it going on and deserves the motto, Vacation Land. A unique museum you might like is the Seashore Trolley Museum. See how urban public transportation has progressed through the years. Just fascinating. Events throughout the year and upcoming Christmas events. You can ride the Heritage Railroad in a vintage trolley from the early 1900s. A collection of vehicles from almost every major U.S. city that had streetcar systems. Highly recommend this and it is dog friendly. Kennebunkport, a longtime year-round resort destination, is a 40-minute drive south of Portland, known for its shopping, Long Sandy Goose Rock and Arendelle Beach. Kennebunk's lower village and dock square are located along the ocean in Kennebunk River, a very scenic area for walking. It is a longtime shipbuilding mecca where you can see schooners making their way down the river to the sea. On the hillsides, impressive antique mansions. Here you can find unique gift shops on brick-laid sidewalks with vintage street lamps. Whale watching and sailing excursions. At first chance whale watching cruises with narrated cruises educating about the marine culture of Maine while seeing whales, giant swordfish, playful dolphins, and other wildlife. Also at Eco Adventures, you can take a small first class, more intimate excursion where every seat has a 360 degree view. Go into more remote areas that other boats can't reach. At Coastal Maine Kayak and Bike, you can take guided tours or rent kayaks, paddleboards, scooters, or bikes to really explore the beautiful landscape around Kenny Bunkport. Federal Jack's Restaurant, a tavern and pub with upscale grub, water views, and house-made ales. To some, Maine is just that state in the Northeast that has lobsters. I know, I felt that way. But after filming here, just so impressed. More and more people are starting to realize that this just may be the ideal vacation getaway. Maine also reminds us that life is about people as well that downtown should be a warm and inviting place where people socialize. And Maine is making that happen with so many charming downtown Main Street villages. From sailing in Bar Harbor to a walk down Main Street in Bath to crossing the Casco Bay in a ferry, Maine has so much to offer. As with all of our videos, check out the description below because we put links and addresses of the places of interest featured in this video to help you plan your next trip to Maine. Ironically, we end our journey in Naples, Maine, because our next big video will be in Naples, Florida. We are Tampa Aerial Media. We shoot travel promos across the USA. For licensing or stock footage, contact us at info at tampaaerialmedia.com. Thank you for joining us during this whole three-state, four-video journey of autumn in New England. We appreciate all the comments and the new subscribers. I hope that we are a help to your vacation planning. Blessings to you wherever you may be.